All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. There's a spider. Anyway, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be doing the bearings, the front wheel bearings on the 95 F150, also known as Old Red, um, on this channel anyway. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, the 4x4 is very similar to the two-wheel drive, so some of the components from the, I, some of the things that happen in this video, you can relate to that video. So this one's this one uh, isn't quite as in detail. It's more of a showing or like a quicker version, I guess to to put it simply. But anyways, guys, yeah. Anyways, guys, yeah. What did y'all learn this week? This week I learned. I started my body class, and I actually learned that you can't have any silicone-based lubricants in a body shop. That's something interesting that I did not know. Um, because it does something to the air and paint won't dry or it wrinkles up. I can't remember exactly, but you can't have paint or grease or anything, or, well not paint, it's, it's a paint shop. You can't have silicone based lubricants or uh, grease in a shop and there's some other things too like tire shine and stuff like that. And uh, I can't remember exactly why at the given moment, but it does something to the paint to where it doesn't uh, adhere right or something. I don't know, I don't, don't quote me on that body guys out there because I don't know. I will know whenever I get further on down the road in the class, but um, anyways, yeah, that's what I learned. What did you guys learn? Let me know in the comment section. Something I want to talk about real quick is why I haven't uploaded in the past three weeks, four weeks. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while. Um, I think it's. I think we're going on three weeks now, and it was mainly because of the holidays. I'm just gonna be honest with you. We had Christmas, and then we had New Year's, and and it was cold. It actually snowed at one point not here but somewhere I went it snowed so um yeah I didn't record anything and I had a video I was gonna post during that time to try to like help you guys out to where you wouldn't be okay I'm trying to cover this light up because it's actually blinding me because it's right in my face mm. anyway I had a video I was gonna record or that I had recorded already but it was like a couple months back and I never went through the footage, and I went through the footage and it was all trashed. So you couldn't see anything I was doing. I didn't even explain what I was doing very well. It was going to be side steps for the F-150, but I just did such a bad job with that video, and I didn't want to take them down and redo it. i got to do them on another truck anyway, so I'll probably just remake that video and then post that one. Because that one was just so bad. I mean, I don't think I've ever recorded one that bad. I mean, it was it was it was horrendous to watch. I mean, I had Zoom. It was awful. So that's one. That's the main reason we didn't have a video was because that one kind of went out the window. But uh, yeah. So without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all get into this video, and uh, I will see you at the end. So.
All right, so it's not. There's a special tool you can buy to do it. But if you just get in one of these grooves with a straight pick, you can spin it off, and this costs a lot less than the special tool. I promise. A set of pieces like five dollars. So now that that's off. I think this pick right here. Just kind of pull it on out. Sometimes it'll be a little funky, but you can get it out with a little bit of finagling. Alright. And that's what basically holds in the bearings. This is the same as a two-wheel drive. It's just inside rather than at the front. And also that dog's going to whimper, so that's going to be fun. So that's out now. We can put our pick and set it down. Now we can just pull the rotor off of the spindle. Like so. Okay, so now what you would normally want to do, clean off that spindle and get it ready for new grease. But I already done bearings on this. They were just wore out whenever I repacked them. So all the grease is still new. So I'm not worrying about that. But now I'm going to show you how to use a bearing packer to pack bearings. Um, we actually used it last night over there, so we already have it like pre-filled and stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so here's our bearing packer. Uh, just had this tub of grease, obviously. So, if you'll look, down there on the bottom is full of grease. If we remove this, yeah, this is obviously greasy. Um, we have this cap here. Okay, so basically there's holes down there, and you shove down on this, and it forces grease up and out through the thing. Okay, that's how you pack bearings. Uh, I'll showcase the one that I have left to pack in a minute. First, we're going to do the difficult part of this process, which is replacing the rotors. So, basically what you have to do is you have to beat out these lug studs, and then you can remove the rotor from the hub. Okay, so, pretty straightforward stuff. Got that lug stud. down now this hub will come out from the rotor like that now they're separate you can take this rotor over there out of the way we have our lug studs we have our hub now the last thing we have to do to this hub remove that back seal on that back bearing and then we'll put in our new seal and bearing and then we'll beat it into the new rubbers. And there we go. That's a pack bearing. Pretty simple. Now without the hassle of having to hit it with your hand. It saves a good bit of time. And I paid 20 bucks for this bearing packer. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bearing back in here. So uh, this now whenever you buy new bearings, they do come on new races. And uh, driving our races isn't really something difficult. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and do this hub I didn't do the other one but no we're not but if you want to drive out a race you just need to tap it out and then tap it back in um, but let's pick up our bearing set it in here like that and then I tried to buy new seals but nobody seems to have them, and even Special Order doesn't even seem to have them. So we're just going to reuse these because they're not in bad shape. I've used them the first time and nothing leaked, so... Um, no reason I shouldn't be able to reuse them this time. I'm just going to tap this in. Alright. And now this hub is complete with bearing and seal. Okay, so I box your rotor. Come, come over, come over here. Come close. I'm close. Okay, drop in your lug studs from the back like this. I have learned this is the easiest way to do them. Okay, you have plenty of access back here with it off the vehicle. Now, if you didn't have access to it with off the vehicle, you can draw it in with an impact. Uh, I'm sure there's a method like that online. I actually used that on the last one, and it proved to be a pain in the friggin' butt. So I came up with a new method for doing this one, and that's how we're gonna do it today. So, get you 
two nice big hammers like so you want one that the end will fit down in here like this then hit the other one okay so a little bit of WD-40 helps them go in easier especially if you're reusing old ones if you're putting in new ones this probably isn't as required but take, take this hammer like this that drops down in there and sits on the lug stud take this big hammer knock it in this works really well uh, especially because you don't have to hold the rotor on there or anything you can just break the fuck out of your hammer Jesus Christ but if I break the handle off this hammer I'll go get it I'll go get a wood handle I guess You can actually hear a tone change um, whenever it's done. See, like that, <laughs> and uh, your hammer starts to fall apart. <laughs> um, but yeah, and now, see the other, the other one that I did, I had a problem where this had play in it, in between these two, and I can move it. This one, I don't have that issue. Um, so I'm unsure of what happened with the other one, but it, I put it on anyway, but this one does not have the same issue. So now, clean the back of the rotor, and it'll be ready to go on the spindle. But yeah, changing these, the four-wheel drive ones, they look difficult, they're not. Tap out the lug studs, tap them in from the back like that, easy peasy. Okay, next part's pretty simple. Just kind of put it all back together. Slide the rotor on. that bearing now goes in like that put on and that goes on start it by hand get it nice and straight And then if you watch the F-250 video, you know about what end plate you're looking for. These, very, very similar. All Fords, these year model and body styles are similar regardless of their four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, 87, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Now, take your straight pick, get in one of them grooves, and run this nut down. And I didn't clean out any grease, so I didn't really need to add much. So make sure everything spins good and free. Then the C clip. Gonna go in, drop down in this groove. I can't exactly show what I'm talking about because it's dark in there, but come on, come on now. And then just put everything back together. Four wheel drive goes in, then. Have this outer snap ring. It's gonna come in here and lock into place. Make it small flat head screwdriver. Push it in. It shits in all the way around. Then inner snap ring. Uh, if you don't have a pair of snap ring pliers, I recommend getting some. These are actually homemade, but they work amazing for some reason. I don't really know why, but they work very well. Uh, I actually got them for free with the toolbox I bought. So. Yeah, I bought this from I think did a lot of stuff, a lot of older stuff, which had snap rings and everything like that in it. So he had a couple, a couple pairs of them, and these are the ones I've actually found work the best. 
So now there's no snap on or anything, but Okay. So, now everything's basically put back together. Should spin nice and free. Um, these new bearings are obviously going to have more resistance than your old ones. Your old ones will wore out. So now, we're going to brake clean the front of this. We're actually going to compress our caliper some. Because it's going to need to for the new, you know, for the thickness of the rotor because we didn't replace our pads but we did replace our rotors therefore we've now changed the thickness so uh, I'm done with grease so I'm going to take off my gloves throw them in the trash now I have clean hands where I can do brake work and I just got grease on them because I'm not very smart but if you're smart about it you can do this very efficiently I did the other side like I said before I even came out here but It's actually a little too much. I didn't really check my end play first, and I definitely should have. So, I'm actually going to remove the four wheel drive and back up and punt. That's more end play than I want. So, Probably like that. Let it just separate and then voila. It didn't even bend it. This little one can be a prick to get out. Um, I've done it a couple times now, so I've kind of sort of got the hang of it, but I've never done it before. It's definitely a pain in the ass. We can do some simple trick. Throw it into the bolts to hold the cap on. And then you can pull straight out. That comes out. Now, ah, uh, C clip wasn't exactly in there, right? So that may have caused it to move. Well, that's fine. We're taking it back out anyway. And uh, whenever I say C clip, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, if you haven't seen it before, that right there is the piece I'm talking about. That basically keeps that nut from spinning. Now, we have too much play, obviously. So, therefore, we're going to take our pick, so we're going to find it, we're going to do that straight pick. down some more. No, there's none at all. Not that awesome? Too much now. So you can have none at all. Back it off a little bit. And then start a C-clip. Uh, I did this with gloves before, so now my hands are going to be dirty as frick. But, oh well. Am I doing that? Man? I don't know. She's fucking fine. She's
perfect, actually, perfect amount of input right there. I'm happy with that. Clean off your hands the best you can now that you now that I did it with my hands. Just throw that back in there. And you can leave those bolts in for now. But you can move it out as you please. Big snap ring. Kind of difficult to install, but not so bad. But you've done it a couple times. <laughs> you can tell I've done this before, huh? And then uh little snap ring goes in the middle. Whenever I replace, so the caps on this one, uh, one of the screws stripped out and I ended up having to drill it out and it ended up being a, a whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I've pulled these uh, these four-wheel drive hubs out a, quite a few times. So I kind of got it down to like a science now. And then you can go ahead and install your cap, but I'm going to wait because I don't want to... Uh, what am I trying to say? And see the way this works. So it goes in there and catches that. See now, four drives engaged, four drives disengaged. So it basically catches that. This is your basically your uh, four wheel drive shaft. So once it catches this, which it has to turn like that, and now it spins with it. But now it spins freely. So if that is constantly engaged, uh, your forward drive will always be engaged from the hubs. Now automatic locking hubs are different. This is for manual locking hubs. Uh, whenever I bought this truck, somebody had already changed it. Because uh, it had mile marker locking hubs on it, which are not Ford factory. So either it came out with factory hubs, or somebody had automatic and changed them to manual. I don't really know the story. But yeah, and they also did wheel brands on there in there because it had Timken bearings. So somebody has already done this once. Uh, these were bad though. I mean, they were making a lot of noise going on the road. Um, so yeah, these should last. At least to me, at least get boomed by for now for a little bit. I'm probably going to have to end up taking this part again in the future and putting some higher end bearings in because I did buy the cheaper bearings this time around. But uh, yeah, I'll end up buying some high end ones because eventually I want to go through and redo this truck front to back, rebuild the motor and the transmission freshened up so yeah and while i'm under here i'm actually going to zip tie my o2 sensor to my transmission lines because after we relocated it it's now wanting to hit the exhaust pipe it hasn't yet uh very happy about that but it, it's going to eventually i kind of see that happening so we're going to go ahead and relocate that and we're going to install a new thermostat because whenever i put one in it uh probably a month ago it put it into 160 and it's called for 195 Anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm going to brake clean this, throw on some rotors, and some, or throw on some pads, and uh, we'll, we'll get the same button up and be done.
Okay, that light is about to get on my last nerves. Uh, it's actually blinding me, I think. Yeah, I think it's actually blinding me. So I'm not using it. Uh, wait, what if I do it from the side like this? No, you, you can't see me. It's just right fucking there. If I do it on the ground. That's decent. And not right in my eyes. I didn't do anything. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh, that's already recording. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, welcome to the end of this video. Um, from now on, I'm not going to have my face with a light right in front of it anymore because that's not good for your eyes, and I like having good eyesight, and I don't want to ruin that. So, unfortunately, guys, quality may go down, or I may try to start this in some sort of I don't know. I may put a new... I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out later on. But anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learned something. Uh, if you'll notice, I edited this, this video a little bit differently. And um, if you like the style of editing, like just, just tell me what you like and dislike about my videos. Like, like if you feel like something was wrong or out of place or the music was annoying or my talking was annoying, I was talking too much, or if... You know, something was in the way, or I didn't show enough. Just just let me know these things. Uh, I mean, you don't have to be a complete jerk about it. You don't have to go, you suck, your videos are trash, and you should just go die in a hole. Like, you don't have to be like that. Um, just kind of, you know, help me along the way, because I'm, I'm learning, you know. I really still don't know a lot about editing, and I've been doing it for almost two and a half years now, and I, I, feel, like I, I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of what I can do. So, anyways, yeah. So, I'm going to quit rambling now, and I'm going to end this video. So, like I said, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, drop a like. If you didn't, let me know why. And uh, subscribe to the channel. And also, don't forget, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.